us cannot trust God until you know the value of God. It's not hearing the value of God. It's not reading about the value of God. It's about knowing his value for yourself. Until you understand his value, you cannot access a lot of healing. You cannot access a lot of deliverances. You won't be confident in even battles until you understand the value of the one you serve. Now, let us go to first, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6. Knowing the value of God for yourself. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 6. Second Chronicles 1, verse 6. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offering upon it. Now, I know a lot of prospective preachers have used this to make money. But beyond the giving, look at the mind of Solomon. How he valued the God of his father, David. That he, he came and he slaughtered a thousand cows. Now, maybe because you read it, it's noisy. They killed the first one. They killed the second one. They killed the third one. They killed 150, 250, 350, 800, 950, 1,000. For which God? No, for which God? So that means that if you say you love God and all you bring out your pocket is one CD, you don't know him. You don't know him. You don't know him. Because if we're to walk into the American president's office, Obama, now you won't take that kind of offering there. Because you understand what he is. So the truth is that we don't know God. Genesis 12, verse 1. Now the Lord hath said unto Abraham, Get thee out of your, thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Next verse. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Next verse. And I'll bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Next verse. So Abraham what? Abraham departed as the Lord had what? Spoken unto him. And Lord went with him, and Abraham was 70 and 5 years old, when he departed out of Haran. Do you know that obedience to God shows your value of God? You can't say you understand God and don't obey him. Because Satan obeys him. The one you fear. So real value of God will show in what you give to God and how you respond to his commands. And Abraham was 75. He was not a youth. If at 75 you can relocate by God's word, you know God. At 75, you say God has spoken, I should go back to Zambia. And you go. That means you know God. From 
Many of us today will question God. We'll question God. We want to give, we'll look at the giving and to see if God is worth the money. Let's clap for the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Jesus Christ said, I do nothing of myself. I do nothing of myself. He understood the value of the father. His whole life was for the father. If you understand the value of God, you will spend your life for God. If you understand the value, you will spend your life. That means in any way he places you, you will live for him there. You ask his approval for everything you do there. See, when we understand all this, and it shows in our giving, it shows in our, in our movement according to his commands. It shows in our life living for him. We can access miracle easily. Because we know he can't fail. One of the names that Jacob called God, Jacob, was the fear of Isaac. Isaac feared God so much that his father knew he feared God and said, and the fear of Isaac. Anyone that understands the value of God will fear God. Not you only give to God. You move according to his word. You will spend your life for God. And you will live in his fear. That means when I'm about to do something, I know God will do something when I do bad. I know he will react. I know I won't escape. That is the fear of God. But if you look at evil and step in it, you don't yet fear God. So many people want to move in the arena of faith. But the arena of faith will move around the things you know about God and how you react to God. <laughs> when God speaks to me of a thing, even if my wife is times 10,000. She can't change it. I know one is strong enough. Why? Because I understand him. Because the consequences of my obeying my wife will be too high. She can't even bear it. She might even fight me. Why don't I obey the one that can hold us together? That's for God and clap very well. Now, when you begin to live in the reality of this God, life becomes very easy for you. The Bible says that after Solomon did what he did, God visited him that night and say, what is your request? It was not because of the amount, because the cattle upon the thousand years, they are his own. But what did this boy think about? Who, who taught this boy this thing? Who, what kind of mind does this boy have? He thought 
thousand offering to who? <laughs> now, when you know the value of God, <laughs> you will defend what belongs to him. In the book of First Samuel, the Bible says that when David saw Goliath, he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? How dare you defy the armies of the living God? How dare you defy the armies, not him, oh, the armies of the living God, the armies of Israel. How dare this one? See, when you understand God, you defend God. You will not be where people are mocking God and keep quiet. Because you know who they are mocking. You won't join them. You will not join sinners. Now, I think I'm permitted to share this today. I was working in a car company in 19, year 2000. And my boss had traveled then. I was an ordinary salesman. We had general managers. We had managers. So we didn't know that the banks, the, my boss was owing the banks. So the bank came and they started during the office hours to lock up the office that we were owing. I, I wasn't a pastor then. I was not even serious with God then. And I was with a client. And I saw one of the bank men come in and say, stop that and move out of his office. And I laughed. People are parking. And I came out to see what was happening. I saw people harassing people. I now went back to our office. Then the security man, that in, he has a place in my office where he keeps his things. I went to the office. I said, give me that your sword. The moment I said that, the boys under me came and picked other instruments and we chased out every banker. <laughs> now, now listen, listen. The point is, God saw that move in 2000 and brought me today. Because we won't be quiet and the devil will take over his church. Do you understand that? You have to pass through us first. When you know the value of whom has sent you, you defend what he has given to you. He said, occupy till I return. And when he said defend, he has given you all power to do it. And look, what happened? The manager, all of them ran away. And when my chairman came back, I was promoted to a manager. Amen. Two weeks later, he heard about it. They gave me a branch that no supervisor was there. The biggest branch of the business. I was the only one there. Because he knew that I would defend it. Likewise in this church. There are many instances where even physically some people want to encroach on the ship. We will tell them you can't do that. A young boy was trying to woo one of our girls. I said, what do you want to do? My friend lived there. She's 16 and what I do? You want to destroy her life? Live there! I think I will just pray it out. I will say, live there! When you understand the value of who has sent you or who you are serving, and all those things and what he sees about you and shows up quickly in your matter. When all those things are in place, God easily shows up in your case. And even gives you things. I didn't ask for promotion. I didn't ask the man for any promotion. I did it and I just forgot about it. If man could reward that way, 
if man could reward that way, because Jesus Christ said, if men that are wicked can give their children good gifts, how much more your heavenly father? Do you know what God can give to you? Let him have an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying today. Everyone that had honored God, he honors in return. Abraham, Abraham was honored. The Bible says he's his friend forever. Forever. To the extent that Jesus gave a, a story about Lazarus and a rich man, and Abraham was the one talking to the rich man from hell. That is how the honor is. When you honor God, He honors you to, a, and you can't imagine where it will go. I want to tell you something clearly. The devil has no power over you. If you walk into that circle of valuing God in all your life, the devil has no power. He came to Job and he saw a hedge around Job. And he went back to God that you have put something there. You remove it first. I know I cannot go until you remove it. I can't move until you remove it. So if that hedge is there, Satan cannot move beyond the hedge. He'll go and look for something else to do. But will you come into the hedge? You see, when you dishonor God, you step out of the vine. He said, every branch that abide not, abided not in me, he cuts off. Once you get off the branch, you are exposed to the devil. But when you remain in God, you are in the covering of God. You can't come and take the healing and walk out of the covering of God again and behave as you like. You destroy yourself. Because the devil will come times two. You this morning. Talk to God. You I don't know where he has ministered to you. I don't know the areas you need to get yourself back. In the fear of God, in obedience of his word, in his giving, many of us are just giving as we like. And your giving shows who you are giving to without respect Exodus 23. Exodus 23. 25. Exodus 23, 25. 
And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. He has the power to remove any disease from you. Just serve him. That's a statement of authority. When you serve me, I will remove it. Satan cannot keep it there. He said, I will remove it. And if you are not blessed, I will bless your water and your bread. He has the power to do it. So when you serve me, when your life pleases me, I will take sickness away with just one word. I will take away that's a that's a statement of authority. Nothing can stay in your ears. It doesn't have the power to stay. Leprosy and his time was a you can't even heal a leper. They are removed outside the colony. But with one touch, he became like a baby. Ask me not away from your presence, so oh Lord. God has been speaking to some of you, speaking and speaking. Today is a time to take a decision of the fear of God in your life. Stir unto me the joy of thy salvation. The fear of God is known in your life when the circumstances that made you fall before comes out again how you address it you address it with a lot of anger that you cannot fall again before your God when you know what you went through that God did to you the last time and that same thing come up again you will be very aggressive about it that's the fear of just move into it again and again and again and again. That's not fear of God. The day God warned me, I said, do not allow them to take offering again here. Last week Sunday, they brought the boy. I said, no, just take it out. Take it out. I know what I went through with my God. Take it out. I can't do it second time again. Jesus Christ said that servant that knew his master's will and did not do it shall be beaten with many stripes. You know what he wants you to do and you don't do it. I want us to just talk to God this morning and just tell him to have mercy upon us.